so so how, how, how do you understand it? Why to that vignette? It's kind of I just have it's just based on our experience, I think. <laughs> I mean, if it's dark adapted, it should be around 0.8. Uh -huh. If it's like 2,000 micron sense, so absolute full sun, it might be as like 0.05, 0.1. It's like Dave was saying. Basically, it's all going to help you. What, what exactly means that you say dark adapted? It means that how long you should be dark? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. I mean, Honestly, like, even on the uh, Perspectives, lessons, ideas, frustrations, anti-frustrations. So when you're doing a lot, it's much easier. Is there no way to do that? Well, it's, it's funny because we only have these problems when we have eight people all trying to use devices at the same time. But most people in their applications have one device that's always connected to the same phone. Do you know what I mean? And then no, no. It's like, you know, right. No, no, but what I mean, no, no, it's the actual count of the data you're collecting. Oh, but you can't do that. Yeah, but you get distracted. No, <laughs> but, I, 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 maybe I didn't show you. So you can auto increment. Right, I didn't auto increment. If you auto increment, then you can't lose it. And okay. You should, you know, that's what I would suggest for your students. Is right. Then they can auto increment through each segment, northwest, southwest, ten right. on each. Then you're old. They can't. So it'll go. It, so the auto increment then goes what? It goes one. One to ten. Then t and then it's then it won't let you do anything. Is that what it is? No, no, it actually stops at ten. It's supposed to. It would so it, then it would start back over at yeah. one. Yeah. So you still sort it. Of... <laughs> That's okay. You always have to do that. Congratulations. Right, yeah. it's really something we can design it for. You can't do that. Can't go on autopilot. Well, you put it on a robot or a drone, and then it automatically calls Dan. 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 Then in terms of comparison. The, the auto increment thing was brilliant because we, we only did that sort of on the second or third measure, second measure, <clears throat> and it was brilliant. Because like when I do it, I'm doing like 20 samples per tree, and I'm just saying, some Mrs. Jones will come up and she's like, oh, that's really interesting, what are you doing? And I'll be chatting away to her and I'll completely forget what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has to. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Good. And I don't think the photos slow you down that much. On those phones, on my phone, for whatever reason, it's like it can get locked up. I think it's phone dependent. Okay. That's there's not much we have. We don't have a lot of control over that. You're calling the app's phone function. It's like, it's it's well, you can install custom phone apps, so maybe that will well, speed things true, up. Yeah, it, it depends on what functions getting called in Android. So, uh, if there's no more thoughts, let's go. We don't have to take a photo for every leaf either, do we? Like no, if, we're, no. if we're doing doing a plant and, and you say, okay, all of the leaves are light green, then you really just take one photo yeah. and then save yourself some time. Yeah, I, I don't, frankly, I don't take photos most of the time because unless you have a specific reason why you want to look at it, at this point, it's So we're going to go look at the data. Yeah, this screen is just like a little bit so we're going to put down data for those of you who haven't done it before. Um, all right, so I think there must have been multiple fans for us. But uh, <laughs> I don't I don't think it's in the list. Or someone hasn't uploaded it. Yeah, no one else has uploaded it. Uh, I don't think we're all Anyway, we'll look at the stuff that we got. I uploaded a bunch, so. So if you click on add, I'm going to just do like 10 minutes on this. If you click on add, then you can see all of the metadata that we that we included. So we can do things like choose all the different colors and import them as separate series. And now we have each of those colors in the series. Oh, no, we, yeah, that's right, great. And then we can do stuff like graph it. So let's graph light intensity, uh, let's just do, uh, actually, let's do what, what Dave was showing yesterday, which is apply to, I find it, thank you. So does everybody remember that part? Yeah. Okay. Which one are you doing? Phi 2 by phi and PQ. So that's like oh, how much energy is going towards photosynthesis, and then how much energy is going towards heat dissipation, this sort of alternate oh, yeah. method. Yeah. So, is everything came in? We haven't cleaned 
have to bet anything. So we can see we've got an outlier right off the bat, which was you guys, you were negative one. That's it right there. So um, let's go take a look. Uh, I'm not going to steal Dan's number, but I just want to walk through our data. It'll, it'll, it'll allow you to auto-steal that graph much better if you just give it there. Yes. Yeah. So let's take a look. For some reason, phi 2 is negative 1. Uh, I don't know why, actually, because there's a signal here. Like, you can see the. Oh, uh, let's see. You're too close to zero. I think you've got the macros out of sets. That's for. Uh, I think what's happening is, I think. I think. I think what happened was the leak was probably in a very low light condition. But the light sensor was just above the shaded area. That's my guess. Because whenever you see FS go crazy like this, instead of being really nice and flat, when it's like, that means that the leaf was experiencing a low light condition, and then all of a sudden you like hit it with a lot of light, and so it started to flux. So it's, it's as if it's experiencing like FM prime right here, which, which would sort of explain. Because we're trying to take an average of these values, and now we can't. So I think it's fair to say that we've looked at that. Uh, the leaf looks fine, but this sort of explains what the issue was. So um, we should probably flag it and say, um, uh, 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 Shaded leaf. Right. Uh, so I'm going to submit that. And then uh, I'm going to reload this page. Should say that. Okay, you loaded us up as you. Did you do it the team you were on? I don't know. But we'll let's look at that. So poof, we got rid of that point, so now we zoomed in to the available points, right? Because that one point is now gone. If we want to bring it back, we can include fly data points. And now there it is. See, it's back. We don't really want that. Cool. So this is kind of the line that Dave was talking about, and actually it's a pretty good fit because here's zero. We still have some unusual points. We should probably flag these two and go through both the flagging other things. But we have our like line where phi and bq, you know, has a maximum of about one, and phi two has a maximum of about one. That's like what we expect. That's the leaf shifting in high light conditions towards phi and bq low light conditions towards So that's neat. So um, we can look at other stuff. Let's look at um, let's look at light intensity by well, what do you guys want? I was gonna look at light intensity by contact density or temperature. On the x-axis, I want linear electron flow. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. And on the y-axis, I want to see VH plus. All right, we'll see. I have a feeling most of our VH pluses aren't going to be pretty good. It's VH plus. It's the electron flux out to the uh, HP synthesis. So mm. this ratio. Interpret for us, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so in normal electron flow, right? The classical, you go through the two photosystems and then you fix a carbon. Um, you've got, um, with the with, for every electron going through the, the, the photosystems, uh, you're pumping a specific number of protons across the membrane, and then those protons leave through the ATP synthase. However, there's a process called cyclic electron flow where you are putting, you're taking the uh, electrons from NADPH and putting them back in to photosystem one. So you're cutting out photosystem two, and, and essentially the, the electrons are just cycling through photosystem one, which doesn't produce any power, any electrons that can be used for fixing carbon, but it does produce ATP, because each time it goes around, it pumps more uh, protons. So if you see an increase in the VH plus relative to the linear electron flow, uh, that suggests you've got cyclic electron flow that is adding more protons to your system than you would normally see. 
And when that happens, it usually means that this, the chloroplast has another demand for ATP atop, on top of normal things, which could mean uh, stress or repair of some sort. And uh, so we're looking, we're looking for outliers uh, on the top of the, the trend line, and those would be ones that are for whatever reason have high second blood count low occurrence. So like these, like light. So we have light green up here. We have these are greens. So light green and yellow. Yellow is coming down here. I mean, you do have two light greens at the top of this, which is kind of. Two out of yeah, there's two trays of ice, which... Um, let's check. Um, so actually, let's do it by device. Um, hey, Greg, may I ask a question? Yeah. So what you're doing... How do I describe it? So the flagging, everybody ultimately who plays with the website sees that the flag data is out. And, but when you're adjusting and doing modification, if you, beyond the flagging, I don't see what you're doing, correct? Do you know what I mean? But once the data is flagged by everybody who contributes, then it's out of everybody's site, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah, flagging is, applies to everyone. Flagging is a But everyone can forget that by including And not everyone can flag the data, correct? Only the person who collected the data or the administrator. So, um, so that was treatment five. Actually, that was you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, we, and which sample numbers were like? Uh, the first five or the second five? Uh, let me check. Looks like you know something that we don't. The number you talked about? Well, I did the second five. And the second five were the yellow leaves. So I'll just combine the So you can do this. like. See what I'm doing? I'm saying, give me the first five leaves in one set, give me the second five leaves in another set. In fact, you can combine things. You can, you can say, give me red color of the first five leaves and call that, make that a series. So I'll show you how to do that. You can see that here. It's saying, give me the first five. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, I'll turn these off. And otherwise, we're not going to go and change them. So it's actually a mix. It's mostly the first time, but these two outliers are actually the second. Uh, and what numbers? So I, I have to go and click the dots. But, um, Can you just click on the, the dot? Yeah. Hi, fine. Thank you. So this is high. 
right. You like the flying Q okay. up. Yeah. So this is like almost no phi 2. <coughs> phi 2 is basically 0, phi and PQ is basically 1. I'm missing the image. Oh, gosh. That's a red lead. Yeah. Can you um, scroll in on the zoom in on the on the FS FM as well on that on that view they just added? Oh, I'm sorry. Just zoom in on that on the fluorescent strip. Yeah. It's nothing. Yep. So basically, what we what we found. Well, there's a there's, there's a little bit. Maybe that could be. But it gets really small. So the way we calculate phi 2 and phi and O, we use the, the FS, FM, and FO parameters. But for phi and PQ, we're just measuring 1 minus phi 2 minus phi and O. So what we're, we're finding is that there's this chunk, when you look at that phi and PQ, that goes from about 0.85 up to 1, those are your effectively dead leaves. Because you have no phi and O, you have no phi 2 because the, the trace is so small. So. But one minus zero minus zero. Pretty whatever. much. But I would say that is a that's a biological. You don't see but those that are, drop. If you do it by the by the color again, you'll see that all of the red, almost all of the red ones are in that range of about 0.9, which means they're either doing very little photosynthesis or they've already seen it. So can okay, let's load, load up the colors. Yeah.
did different species trees as well, didn't we? So we can't really compare. So here, let's. Um, yeah, I mean, not in the 70 meters. Let's so we can just do averages across the There we go. So this is phi 2 for each different leaf types. Now, we have to be really cautious. We're going to talk about this tomorrow in the analysis. And just take law averages for phi 2 and phi and BQ, compare stuff because the light intensities are different. They're going to be different. So don't derive any meaning from this. You have to do further analysis to make this meaning. Okay. So, can you run a statistical ANOVA? <coughs> uh, you could, but it's still not. It's still you not have there. to account for light intensity. You can't yeah. do that. So yeah, you can actually take a measurement between the different trees, like there's two trees that were down there, the numbers two and three, I think. How many of your measurements seem to be in the sun? Versus when you were at these couple of measurements here, what percentage of the measurements did you feel like the you know, leaf was in the sun when you were taking the measurement? Because that can, those canopies were really thin, so I'm guessing just about everything had quite a bit of sunshine. This was thick and everybody was standing underneath it. Yeah. So You also tend to see that too, because you kind of just like, oh, fine, thank you, this, you know, bad, or fine. But if you have a dying tree, you have more uh -huh. light canopy, you tend to have higher fine for you. So it's just, it's very easy to get, to, it's easy to just anyway. All right, so I'll spend a little bit of time talking about how to clean data sets, but I don't want to spend a whole lot of time. Where is this? Where is this on the screen, right? It's over. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. One thing I, for people who have, how many people have cleaned data before? Taken a bunch of data with the, uh, with the beta, going through the whole process, I know Joe, Sonia. I've taken a whole bunch of data, but I haven't cleaned anything yet. Oh, okay. All <laughs> right. Well, Greg, <laughs> okay. okay. someone's cleaned So, I mean, one of the things that's really difficult to do is how a lot of people have bad data points that can make it. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I'll start with this. First, the question is why do we clean bad data points? Or why do we clean our data? Um, one of the things is if we have, you know, we have bad data points, it's this huge outlier, it's going to screw up our ANOVA, you know, we're going to add variability to our data set, and then it becomes hard to get a statistical analysis. Having said that, I've seen people who say, oh, that's an outlier, so I'm going to go ahead and flag it just because it's an outlier. That's also not the right approach. But what we want to do is, you know, look at measurements, is it a bad measurement, meaning there's something technically wrong with the measurement that's going to affect our ability to do statistical analysis to interpret what's going on, but not get rid of a data point that is actually interesting and valid. So I kind of use this uh, data as an example. If you just look, this is a, a website you can just decide to flag. You can generate a little graph to tell you how many of the data points are good and how many are flagged. And maybe you can do that if you want to test how good someone is at taking measurements. You just hire someone new to go out and take measurements. It's like, measurements are crap. I'm not paying that guy this week. Um, <laughs> Or student, you get the yeah, or student, you know, you want to be able to, to grade their performance. But it's not just how the, the data collector is doing it, it's also can tell you something relevant about the about the trees or the plants that they're measuring. In this case, you know, there's like fifteen percent of the data points are flagging, but oh, they do a good job. But when you break it down to which leaf, top, middle, bottom, you see that a quarter of the tree, quarter of the bottom leaves are bad, which means what's happening is they're senescing. So when you were taking the measurement, it was late in the season, and it's not necessarily that the data collector did a bad job. These are mature plants that are starting to senesce. So it gives you an idea of what's going on, the condition of the plants, even if you don't have that specific question, that is, what is you know, fair, good, poor? That's one. And I want to kind of go over, You can't see anything. No, I can't. Nope. <laughs> it's it's all bad. All right, so actually, I'll, 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 I'll in front of the screen I'll, and I can't see. I'll draw it. So, first. Oh, well, that's better. Um, <laughs> the day before, we have all of our markers. We, we have markers and then an eraser and an eraser. Are they on the white? I guess that's the first one. First one with markers. There's some markers on that piece of paper on the table. Ah, there they are. Okay, so first, what are the, the common causes of 
bad measurements. And if anybody has taken the data with the beta device, how easy was it for that nice, you know, that nice foam that you have either side you put a leaf in and then the wind blows and then yeah. <laughs> right? So yeah. that was, it was really easy for that leaf to shift in there. So we would get a curve that, you know, if you're FS, FN, you know, FO is supposed to look like that. Instead you get something that looks like Right? Something that's just crazy. That's what you would see if you could actually see those figures. So there's all kinds of what you can see. Maybe just in the FO, you see a spike like this, or in the FM, or in the FS, you see a spike that goes like this. These are just, with the betas, it's just the leaf shifted. Okay, so maybe the person started to fall asleep and mm -hmm. off they go. That happens a lot. But with the new device, uh, if you notice this today, how many had trouble keeping the clamp on the leaf today when they were out taking measurements? Anybody know this problem? We have these, now we have these rubber seals that actually kind of hold on to the leaf a little bit. And if the leaf is going to be really shiny and waxy, there's still a chance it's going to slide. You still have to be careful. But you can't just move your hand a little bit. So hopefully, what I would say is the number one cause of bad data points with the data device, I'm hoping we've eliminated that. I don't know what you think, Greg. I think we'll pretty much gotten rid of that main problem. And I think the leaf movement was the worst. Yeah, but. I agree. It's going to be much improved. Yeah. But so, you do sometimes have to, I, I would suggest like holding on to the stem. You maybe but still need to. Yeah, yeah, hold on to the stem instead of the leaf. And you need to see if you're out of doors, you know, if you're doing a tree and it's on a windy day, obviously it's different than if you're in a growth chamber and the plants where you're sitting there. Obviously those conditions matter. But that's the first reason for... Yeah. Well, let's, so actually, that leads me to a good point. So the other thing that we implemented on this new device that we did, did you tell them about open, close, start? All right, so because you have the open, close, start, now you can answer your questions, hit measure. Now, I've done this in the field. Hit measure, put the phone in the pocket, go and clamp the leaf, hold it with one hand, clamp with the other, yeah. and then once you open and then close, the leaf measurement starts. Then I just need to, once I'm measuring, then I can open or oh, another merchandise option would be some sort of frame thing that you yeah. slide. I, I think I saw it like the neck basket or something. Yeah. Right there. yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but something like that. Or you'll know, put your put your phone on a lanyard that you yeah, yeah. drop yeah. it down. The point being, you have more freedom to use multiple to use both your hands to keep the leaf steady than you had with the beta. So that's probably the number one reason that we used to have. Hopefully that's not gonna happen too often. The next big reason is that the leaf is too damaged. Pests ate it, there's a disease, there's something else that's going on. And there's a couple of weird things, which maybe you can see it a little bit. This is showing the phi too, it's showing here's the FM and here's the FO. So for some reason those curves are, are flipped, where FO, which is supposed to be minimal fluorescence, is somehow higher than FM, which is supposed to be maximum fluorescence. It doesn't make sense, but it's a trend that I've seen over and over and over and over and over again in the data when you have an obviously dead or dying leaf that's under a lot of stress. I don't know, you know Chris could probably tell better if there's a biological reason for that or if it's just electronic noise, I don't know. Uh, sorry, I spaced out for a moment. What was the... <laughs> <laughs> Did I say one of the... F0, F0 is higher than FM? I've seen this, like I saw this the other day with the version 1.0. This is what the leaf looked like. Highly chlorotic with a disease. Okay. Um, and almost every leaf that had that disease had that trace. Uh, so when you're taking the F0, you have a, a far red light that's mm -hmm. on. No, the far red light turns off by the time that the far red light is on, oh, okay. and then you turn it off, and then you just... Okay, it's not... Uh, it's not in, in. Uh, best I could... I don't have a biological explanation for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it's quite possible that this is, that it's somehow the disease is actually responding to the light somehow, yeah, right. and actually picking up a signal from the disease. I, I don't know. But the point is that this is probably now with the new device, I think the most common source of, I say bad data, just because when you look at it, you don't really know what the hell's going on. That doesn't mean it's a bad data point. But data that you need to figure out is probably going to be because you have this damage. It's either too drought stressed, it's, it's senescing, it's got a, a pest or disease damage. And then what you need to be able to figure out is what am I going to do with this data? And I'm not going to pretend to have an answer about what you're supposed to do with it. Um, 
So one of the things, this is where we talk about the, the picture. I hope everybody got a chance to look at the taking a picture after the measurement that, that we now have in the app. Because what happens is, when you take the measurement, you're like, oh, okay, this is a dead leaf. And then you don't say anything about it. And then two weeks later, you go and look at the measurement, and you're like, why does this look like this? And there's no way that you're going to possibly remember a specific measurement on a specific leaf at a specific time in a specific row or, you know, plot within the field. So those new tools that we've added, being able to add a note at the moment you take a measurement, take a picture at the moment of the measurement, is really going to help you determine what happened after the fact. Because if you don't have a picture, you're going to look at this and you're going to say, this is bad. How can FO be higher than FM? I'm just going to flag it. I'm going to throw it out. Now you can look and say, no, I'm going to keep it in because this is telling me something. If every one of these traces that I found on this project the other day, FO is higher than FM that has this disease, that's an indicator of something that's important. And this is going to be different for you know, whatever experiment you're doing. But so it's the importance of those pictures. It's important to that metadata that Dave was talking about earlier, to really know what's going on. The next common uh, reason for you know, bad measurements is that the light guide is not completely covered. So like Greg mentioned earlier, if you have a thin leaf that doesn't cover it, your absorption measurements aren't going to be accurate. Uh, maybe it was Dave that was talking about it. If you're doing a fluorescence measurement, it's fine. It doesn't matter. But if you are looking at that SPAD and you're analyzing that SPAD value and you're not covering it, that will be a problem and it will mess up your analysis later. And how many people when we were out collecting measurements today saw a red error come up on their app when they took a measurement? Did anybody read that error? Proton motor force. There's there's a red and a, and a yellow, I believe. So the yellow would be the proton motor force, and there was a there's a red one that I know came up a couple times at least. I know, but anyway, <laughs> the point is, I would just say read this, but because of the screen, I can't say that. <laughs> what that's saying is that the chlorophyll content is too low and out of range, and that's one of a couple of errors that we've put into the macro tell the user when they take a measurement, hey, something's wrong here. So if you measure a really nice green leaf and you get a red error that says chlorophyll content's too low, that doesn't make sense. So most likely what happened is your leaf you know, has slid out of the, the light guide. It's not completely covering it, so the light's passing straight through from the light to the detector. And that gives you the opportunity to, in the field, discard that measurement and retake it. because. It is much easier to clean your data in the field when you're taking it, taking the measurements, than it is to come back and look at the computer and figure out what happened three days later. So the best way to ensure quality is to ensure it in the field by taking a good look at the traces, taking a look at the, any you know error messages that we pop up and decide if that's a reason why that measurement's no good. Maybe it's a biological reason, then you can okay you accept it. But if you think nah, this should be better. It gives you a chance to remeasure that leaf and keep the bad ones out. The other one, the other kind of big reason for that bad data point is Greg was just talking about the idea that the conditions that the leaf are under change too much during the measurement. So you either take a, a, a plant that's in the shade and you pull it out into the sun to take the measurement, and then your far sensor on the device reads full sunlight, and it's shining full sunlight at a plant that was adapted for being underneath the canopy, or vice versa. In the beta device, when it happened, usually what we saw was this. I, I hope you can see at least a little bit. That